It's true what they say. If you don't do something frequently, you lose it. It's so hard to film. I keep saying the wrong things. Hello. Hi friend, how are you doing? If you are new to my channel, hi, thank you for stopping by. My name is Maru, I'm a New Zealand based YouTuber, makeup artist and a mental health advocate. And if you are not new, hi, thank you so much for coming back and thank you for stopping by. Yes, I am gonna be resuming videos slowly, getting back into the usual YouTube routine, starting with Mental Health Mondays. The purpose of Mental Health Mondays are really for you to take whatever that I'm talking about and take that away and just think about it in terms of your own life so put it in context to your own life so whatever I say is going to be based on my own personal experiences and circumstances and therefore it will always be different to your own experience and life take whatever I say as not not as facts on that note today for mental health Monday I'm gonna be talking to you about financial well-being a year ago, if you told me I'll be sitting here doing a Mental Health Monday video on financial well-being, I would have fallen off my chair and been like, get out of here. But we're here now. A lot has changed. A lot has happened in the past year. The pandemic being the most biggest thing that's still going on and affecting so many lives. But there are all the other personal things that have also happened. And therefore, I'm sitting here talking to you about financial well-being and how important it is for each and every one of us to take control and take that initiative to invest into our financial well-being, pun intended. What is financial well-being? It's really no different to mental health or emotional well-being or anything like that i feel and i truly believe that financial well-being trickles into all aspects of wellness or well-being of an individual and that's true because with financial well-being you can really give yourself you're going to gift yourself that peace of mind to not have to worry about your finances because you are well informed you're making informed decisions you're making educated guesses because you have grown your financial knowledge so financial well-being is a big umbrella that covers a lot of other aspects today i'm just going to be very very generally be talking about it and why it's important and also in particular why we need to talk more about it in brown households so by that i mean south asian households of course these conversations need to happen in every household but obviously i come from a south asian family and background and therefore i can truly relate to the importance of this topic in every single south asian household now i'm going to be diving into a few values that we are often injected with as a south asian child or teenager young adult and why we need to make little tweaks to have a better financial future starting with the idea that south asian girls need to be financially secure through their male counterparts now this is a big one and from now on i will truly be very open with my own uh, family background and stuff like that i have refrained from that but due to you know my grandma grandmother passing away in the last month or so and it's just changed a lot of things for me and my perspective on how i share stories i am going to be going a little bit more personal i grew up uh being raised essentially by a single mother yes my parents are technically together but in the primitive years the most important years where all my ideas were being formed around money and personal finances and and when i started really understanding how household operations work and stuff like that it was only really my mother that was emotionally and physically uh, available and therefore i learned a lot of things from her and watching her do things now i have huge appreciation and admiration for the life that my mother gave us myself and my two other siblings however there are still a few things that i wish i had known better and it's not her fault it's just she knew what she knew and she didn't know what she didn't know as a result i took on these ideas such as when i get married or end up with a partner they have to provide for me and that is wrong because the other person is also another person and they have their own aspirations and dreams and they probably want to take risks in their lives and and it's not fair for me to put that much pressure on my male counterparts or my partner to 
to, to have to constantly feel like they need to protect me financially and, and know what to do with finances on my behalf. Even though m my mum was the sole parent that was there emotionally, physically looking after us in that time, I often would hear her complain about things, financially related, monetary wealth related things that she didn't gain from her relationship or marriage. And what that taught me indirectly is that th I need to get those things in, in my relationship with my future partner. That needs to change because we need to raise our children, making them understand that everybody needs to be responsible for their own finances and financial well-being. So that's number one. Now on the other side of that, we cannot raise boys, making them feel like they have to take on all that pressure to be able to provide for their families. And what that does is it constrains them. It makes them feel like they can't take any risks because they have to be available financially and provide for their families. I'm not, th I'm not saying they shouldn't, I'm saying that load can be eased. And I probably am going against a lot of traditional values here so if you feel strongly about it just remember this is just what I think um, and we can di agree to disagree but treating a male like a person who has his own wishes and dreams and you know aspirations you know he doesn't have to be a doctor or an engineer or an accountant or, or, or be in a high paying job because he has to provide for his family and be able to make sound, well informed, educated financial decisions. That's a lot of pressure. Whereas if he had a partner that knew and was well educated in, in their finances, then he can feel confident that she would be able to share that load with him. And it does make a difference because in our marriage, I truly believe in allowing my husband to have his life where he doesn't feel like he needs to provide for me and vice versa. So we we do talk about our finances and co-jointly make decisions together. Now this is something I had to unwire old thinking and rewire a lot of things for myself. So that's number two. So please don't tell our daughters that uh, they can find financial security and stability in their partners and don't raise our boys feeling like they have to pressure themselves to provide provide and provide while com compromising on their dreams and aspirations even after getting families of their own another thing that is not widely talked about is the idea of retirement now every time in south asian homes retirement is brought up often you hear i'm not going to rely on my kids in case i'm disappointed or whatever what really doesn't get discussed is is how you invest in your retirement like planning your retirement is not a common conversation and it should be it should be a conversation in every household but as i said before i come from a south asian background therefore particularly in south asian backgrounds there is this emotional thing around retirement and you're caring for your parents and you know owing a lot to them which you do but it's just as important for everybody the parents, the children, everyone to know what retirement entails and just being able to plan for it. Just have a realistic approach to retirement. There is a monetary aspect to retirement. There is a quality of life aspect to retirement. None of this gets discussed openly with different generations. See, if you have a parent that is heading towards retirement, you've got your children, it's so healthy for you to openly talk about their retirement plans with your children around because you're indirectly educating your children as well as educating yourself and your parent um, about retirement and looking forward to retirement and what that really involves anyway so that is the end of mental health monday that's enough for me and also what's changed is my perception of time management now that could be our next uh monday's session so thank you for listening again and i hope this video was useful like you know i hope that this video kind of prompts you to think about these things in your in, in in terms of your own life in context to your own life and please you know try and have those conversations you know now that you've seen this video try and have this conversation with your parents you know try and have a conversation related to finances personal finances or retirement i i challenge you because it's so healthy it's really important 
you're investing and in, in adding value to so many people's life not just yours by doing had, by having these conversations thank you for listening please remember to hit that subscribe button because we are going to be making more videos soon from now on yeah give this a big fat thumbs up and uh, leave a comment below let me know what your thoughts are on this and what other topics you want to see on this channel and uh, have a good one i'll see you in my next video bye